How does Red Sox righty Matt Barnes define closer? If you use Craig Kimbrell in the seventh inning, he's not the closer. Right, right? The closer is technically the guy that throws the ninth inning in a three-run game or less, Barnes said. The closer isn't defined by what the person's name is. It's defined by the role in which they're used in a game. The closer technically is the reliever who pitches the ninth inning, or is he? Who's the Red Sox closer in what inning will he pitch? Manager Alex Cora hasn't named his closer. Opening day is today, Thursday. Boston plays the Mariners in Seattle. Barnes likely is this team's unnamed closer. But he also might pitch the eighth inning if that's the highest leverage inning in a given game. On those days, Ryan Brazier would earn the save, or blown save, in the ninth. The game is changing. So, why have the closer pitched the ninth if he's the best reliever and the middle of the opposing lineup is due in the eighth? Why even name a closer? The Red Sox feel they don't need to name one. The closer has typically always been the most valuable guy in the pen. Barnes said, but in the way the game has transformed over the last four or five seasons, and the way relievers are used, holds in even high leverage situations, even if it's not a save, are just as valuable in the outcome of a game as the last three outs. Cora is saying he'll base late game bullpen decisions on matchups. But it's likely we'll see Barnes pitch the highest leverage inning whether the eighth or ninth or maybe even the seventh at times. And so he'll probably end up with the most saves and pitch in the most high leverage spots during 2019, the coaches showed Barnes information during spring training that he actually pitched in tougher spots than Kimbrell last year. I think I'm going to be saying it throughout the season, we've got stuff, so it's up to us to find matchups we can exploit and they can maximize their talents. Cora told reporters. That's how we're going to do it, if managers expect closers to pitch the highest leverage spot, not just the ninth, the arbitration process should change. If Arns pitched in tougher spots than Kimbrell last year, shouldn't he have earned more than $1.6 million in arbitration for 2019? Tyler Thornburg, who hasn't done much at all since 2017, is earning more than Barnes, $1.75 million. I think holds in an arbitration process probably should be valued more than they are. Barnes said. Or there shouldn't be as wide of a discrepancy from saves to holds, it's a very traditional process. Barnes added. Saves, Eric strikeouts. It's a very traditional process. The back of the baseball card is what matters a lot, should holds and saves be viewed equally in arbitration? That's a tough question. Frazier said. Yes and no obviously, the ninth inning is usually the most. All innings are. I mean, hell, a sixth inning, one run game is just the same as a ninth inning, one run game. Now if they score after that, the sixth inning, obviously you can't do anything about that. But yes and no. Large save totals are nice but not necessary. Versatility seems more important in a changing game. If teams want closers to be more versatile, large save totals shouldn't mean as much in arbitration. Zach Britton explained last season that closers in their arbitration years might be less open to pitching the eighth on occasion because it could affect them financially, the save aspect of it is more so when you're an arbitration player. Britton explained to MassLive.com last year. So the game hasn't caught up to holds. They pay for saves way more than they pay guys that get holds. So when you're going through arbitration you're like, I want to get saves because it's an increase in salary. I think as you approach free agency, more guys are more willing to do whatever is the job for the high leverage situation, Britain called our arbitration, an ancient system, the saves are so coveted from a pay separation. Britain said. So that's why I think you would see the difference between an arbitration player and a free agent.